Gavin and I are out here this morning. As you can see, we just mowed off this clover plot. And this is a clover plot that's less than a year old. It's long, narrow strip that kind of bends through here. And I'm happy with how it looks. We have some shots from before I mowed it. And there's a lot of weeds, obviously. It hasn't been sprayed, hasn't ever been mowed. Uh, but the clover underneath is nice and lush. Uh, it's a mix of white, uh, some red, and some ladino clover. And uh, clover to me is still one of the best things that you can plant. You're hard pressed to find another option that provides the length of value, like from a year round standpoint. Clover's so good. You know, I, I think it gets overlooked in today's world where we have so many different blends and varieties and different mixes. Clover is still such a good year round option. I mean, obviously a great food source in the summer right now, into the fall and the hunting season. You know, maybe there's a short period of time when it gets really cold in the late winter that's not utilized. But outside of that, I mean, it's providing good food, good nutrition all year round. So I love a really good uh, maintained clover plot. Mowing clover, like almost anything in our world today, has become somewhat of a debatable topic. You know, some guys, especially as of recent years, have been big proponents of not mowing clover and just opting for all chemical treatment or maybe just mowing once. Um, other guys like to mow at least four or five times throughout a summer. Um, and it kind of depends on the clover plot and how it's doing and your, your situation. For me, I do like mowing clover for the reason that I see an uptake in utilization uh, with that fresh growth from the deer. Uh, so I like it for that reason. From a, a maintenance standpoint, in my experience, it doesn't really help the grasses. The grasses need to be sprayed as well as a lot of the perennial broadleafs uh, need to be sprayed. Mowing can help take care of some of those annuals. It can also help uh, curb back some of those other perennials before they start to go to seed um, and start really out competing the clover. So that's kind of what we did today. I mowed really high and basically, you know, I clipped some of the top of the clover, but a lot of it I went over the top and basically just hit the weeds. And like I said, it is debatable, but there's a couple things that people seem to agree on. One is when to mow. Uh, you never want to mow if you're facing hot and dry weather. You want to make sure there's some rain in the forecast. Uh, we've had a lot of rainfall here. There's more in the short term forecast, so it's a good time to mow. And then two, mowing height. You would never want to mow too low and stress that clover out. I, uh, I opted for the zero turn today, as you can see. It's just so much more efficient when mowing a relatively clean clover plot easier to get around easier to get here out the trailer my my pole behind mower uh, so i really like using that and if i set the adjustable deck all the way up it's a little over six inches so you usually don't want to go any lower than that when you're mowing these clover plots otherwise you, you take the risk of really stressing the clover out and you're also getting rid of a lot of good tonnage so keep those things in mind when mowing clover plots and obviously don't overlook clover plots in general um, i'm really excited about this one sets up nice and it's going to provide a lot of good food for the deer and one more thing before i let you guys go i just want to let you know that our friends at america's best bowstrings are offering the middle slide tail community 15 percent off from now until june 5th now's a great time to order custom bowstrings later in the year lead times get a little longer as you can see last week we all got our new strings so just want to let you know abb code is mw family uh, we'll link to it in the description go ahead and get your strings ordered Thank you guys for watching. Have a great week. Hey guys, it's May 22nd, Sunday, and we're down here on the River Bottom Farms trying to get some work done. It's been a really busy spring for us, uh, just trying to chip away at all the projects. We started out this year with burning, 
It was pretty difficult to get the burning done this year with the cold, wet, a lot of rain this past spring. So it's real spotty little holes to get burning done. And Ryan and I were burning uh, after work on weeknights into the dark a few times, but we ended up getting everything burned that I wanted to get burned. It's about 100 acres in total across all the different farms. And that was a great project to get knocked out. Ryan's uh, been working with me a lot this year, helping me out. I get asked a lot about uh, the balance between, you know, deer farming, hunting, work, and the family, and it's, uh, it's certainly getting harder and harder. The older the kids get, the busier they get. Uh, the more land we have to manage, work's really, really busy, so Rye's been a, a huge help, a huge asset to me, just knocking out those projects. We've also been feeding this year. We're, uh, this is the first time that I run a supplemental feed program. I've had feeders. A lot of times I put corn in them to get pictures in the summer, but this year I'm actually trying out doing some protein supplement. So we've been doing that about once a month, just trying to keep the deer nice and healthy. This spring I bought a four row John Deere corn planter, an old 7,000 model. And um, you guys have seen us on the river bottom before. We've had trouble getting food plots in. Used to borrow stuff or try to hire guys. It's a difficult place to get in with big equipment. Last year we did pretty good uh, borrowing Zach's setup. This year I went ahead and got one. And in preparation for all this planning, where I was able to get out here, we got a fertilizer cart out here, got everything fertilized, and we hit it all with Roundup. Right after the snow went out and it, it dried out, we actually mowed off all these food plots. So we're trying to keep them nice and clean this year to make it easier on us. You know, I had a lot of um, giant ragweed grow up in the plots and we have foxtail and things that'll catch the booms on the little sprayer. And so there's a lot of advantages to trying to keep this short and it's just a little easier for the equipment that I have. Last weekend, we came out to try to get used to this planter and familiarize myself with it. We got nine acres of corn in the ground. Um, took a little bit to get everything figured out, but then we rolled with it and, and got a good amount of work done. Got all the seed that we had in the ground, and I just went check it earlier, and uh, it's germinating. It's been, been out, it's been about seven days, so it's nice to see the corn popping up. This is going to be my second attempt at corn down here. In the past, it was wet, not properly fertilized, sprayed late, and the corn really struggled. And so we've always done beans or sorghum. The last year you guys saw we purchased all that electric fencing and it really worked well keeping the deer out of the beans and um, having a nice healthy food plot. So this year I wanted to try corn again. It's nice and early, conditions are good, fields ready to go. We're going to get corn in all the plots and then if for some reason it doesn't come up like we want, then I can still rescue it later. We got plenty of time to put beans or sorghum in the ground. The field we're going to get started on today is this big central food plot in the middle of the whole river bottom farm about eight acres. This is actually the food plot where I shot Merino in January and we had a bunch of good hunts in late season. It's really a late season setup being so large and it's one of these uh, sort of destination. We can hold deer here all winter with it. We actually had quite a bit of food left over that we mowed and um, we're getting quite a bit of volunteer beans popping up but we're gonna we're gonna put corn in the ground and see how it turns out. Yeah. So I was driving on this trail right here, and I was like, that's got to be a snapping turtle shell. So I just pop up a little bit. Well, we just got wrapped up with all the big plots on my piece and on Jared and I's piece. I have a couple spots we're going to put sorghum in, but all the corn's in the ground. Feeling good about that. We got rain coming this week, and uh, things are looking to shape up pretty nice over there. We just made the transition across the river to this little 28 acre piece that I purchased last year. This has 23 
acres of CRP, so I was able to put 2.3 acres in food plots, uh, the 10% rule, and I have this two acre plot that we just, we burned this CRP grass down, tilled it, and did a turnip plot here. And then we did a cover crop with rye and winter wheat. It came up really nice. Rye came in and sprayed it and fertilized it a week or so ago, and it's ready to go. I'm excited to get some grain in this spot. It's just gonna be a two acre plot. But we're gonna get corn here, and we'll get an electric fence around it, and I think this could be a really killer late season spot. There's not a lot of food standing late season here, and on this side of the river, you know, I didn't have much opportunity to hunt over here. The turnips did okay, but uh, they got, eating up pretty quick. So it'll be interesting to see what we can draw in here late season uh, this coming year. We just got this two acre plot knocked out. I'm really excited about this piece. You know, there's a lot of great young bucks on it last year. I actually found the match set to that heavy four year old nine that we filmed a couple times, that one night in the rain and then the one night in that uh, little turnip plot. Picked up his match set. There's a bunch of other really nice young deer. So this will be a spot we're really looking forward to hunting. It's exciting to get food plots in early, fertilized, sprayed on the river bottom farm again this year. Really looking forward to how that'll turn out. The next couple weeks we'll get out and fence them and make sure we have plenty of food for the rest of the year. We're also really excited to introduce a new partner to you guys. We picked up a mineral supplement partner called Aftershock. They have some great products. I'll be telling you guys more about those products in the coming weeks. Still lots of projects to get done on the farms over the next couple of months. Season's right around the corner. Couldn't be more pumped. We appreciate you guys joining us and we'll see you back next week.